Hi everyone, Vicky here. I hope you're well. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you how I made this little card here. It's using the Annabella Spensley um, Happy Holidays. This one is one of the ones that they've done for Crafters Companion. So I'll be using the big stamp and um, some of the sentiments and they're going to be stamped using the Extreme Black from My Favourite Things. Um, so all the colours I'm using I will be showing up at the top of the screen before I actually use them. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm super proud of the hair on this one. Um, it did take a little while to do, um, but I've been working on my flicking technique to get the hair accurate. So what I'm doing is I'm using my tri-blend brush markers for this one. Um, so I'm just laying down a layer of the lightest color um, and then I will go in with the darkest and just flick from wherever the the darkest points would be. So where the bubble would be in the ponytail and the other edge of the ponytail and um, closer to the hairline. Um, so you'll see I do turn my page around. I find it easier to flick my pen away from myself um, rather than try and pull the flick towards me. Um, so I do have to turn the page quite a bit when I do this um, and then once I've done the dark one I go in with the lighter colour and just flick sorry the middle colour rather and just do that ever so slightly longer strokes so that just takes the colour slightly further towards the middle but I want to try and make sure I don't cover up all of the lightest colour I do want to keep some of that highlight in there because obviously that would be where the light was shining on the hair um, I did make a little bit of a boo-boo there so I'm just taking my colourless blender just to push that colour back out before it gets too dark and it actually does really well taking that out which is really good because I would have been really annoyed if I'd had to do this picture for the third time. If you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen um, I did do this before but the coat bled a lot and I, there was nothing I could do to fix it so I had to start again. Um, his hair I just wanted to use just one colour because it's such a tiny tiny little piece um, of hair on him and then I'm using the face shades um, for their faces so I'll just keep colouring and I will keep showing you those colours and I'll just chime in if there's anything I think I need to tell you while I remember um, and I'm just using a little bit of pink to add some rosiness to their cheeks because I think they will be outside and then I'll blend it back out with the face shades so the first time I did the image I coloured the coat on the girl in quite a bright vivid pink um, which is what I do on this one as well um, however it didn't really go to plan I tried to just use my brush markers and there was too much of a difference in the colours and to try and get it to blend it just wasn't working um, this is my Spectrum Noir colour chart so I was trying to decide amongst those which ones to use um, and it is the three darkest of the bright pinks I did end up using I decided to use my standard dry blend for this rather than the brush one because the, the colours are closer together on this pen um, so just trying to lay down colour where I thought they would be the darkest, um, where all the shade would be. Um, I do end up giving the coat two coats as well. That was a little bit of alliteration, obviously. Um, just to try and get the extra depth and blend to it because the light colour, even though it is the next light colour down on the colour chart, it is still quite a jump and it's it's very vivid. So I didn't want the blend to not look smooth. Um, so you will see me laying down the colours twice to try and get that blend nice. And by the end I was really pleased with it. It did come together nicely. All this video is sped up to, well, all the colouring is sped up to two times speed as well. Um, just because it did take me about half an hour, I think, to colour the image. And I didn't think you'd want to sit and watch me colouring for half an hour at standard speed I think you'd have probably got really bored and having to listen to my voice rub it on for that long would probably also have drove you insane so you know 
thinking of you guys. And if you do hear any banging in the background, it's just um fireworks. We live on the quayside in Newcastle. So the fireworks have been going on since about September. They just don't seem to want to go away. Um, I decided to do the accents on her dress um, in gold. Oh, well, it's like a gold yellow blend, I think it classes as. That pen does make a reappearance quite often. It took me a while of to decide what colour I thought would look nice for her um, scarf and her gloves. Um, but then I decided that the dusty purple was quite a nice shade. Um, I'm sorry, it's a little bit low down on the screen for the colouring as well. Um, I'd zoomed in further, so my actual space that was recording was smaller. Because I wanted to zoom in so you could see the colouring a little bit better. So that was a sacrifice and I'm not used to the camera being that zoomed in, I think, is why it's not quite as centred as I probably would have liked. Um, so this image really reminds me of my best friend. I don't know why, but it, it just, for some reason, it makes me think of her. I think it's just with the really nice, pretty, like, elegant coat and then the nice, messy bun. It, it's very much my best friend, to me, anyway. Um, and I decided that I would put her some gloves on as well. Um, once I'd done them, I had a bit of a moment of, <gasps> did I do the right thing? But I think in the end, I was quite pleased with it. Um, but I decided that he wouldn't be wearing gloves. He was going to be being brave, getting his fingers out nice and cold, bless him. Um, just as well as that, I couldn't decide what colour to do his gloves and I thought she would have a matching set. Um, so I've gone with the ice grey shades for her shoes. So they're the nice dark um, greys. Um, but I did decide once I'd coloured in her shoes to add a little pop of colour down there. So I decided to do the laces in pink because, you know, a lot of people now have really nice, pretty bright coloured laces in their shoes. And I thought it would just add that little nice extra touch to the colouring on that one. Um, and there they go. Bright pink laces, because why not? Um, and then next in is the pale pink blend. I decided that she'd have some pink tights on. I did um and ah about what colour to do them. And then I wondered if people would think it was her tights but yeah, we'll see um for him i didn't want too large a color palette and um, but i did decide i wanted to bring in some christmas green um so i did get out my alpine greens which is my favorite green blend um i absolutely love this blend the three colors that come in the tri blend are the same for the standard tri blend and for the brush tri blend um so when I'm doing a slightly larger area, I tend to use the brush ones, but for getting in all these little bits, I've tended to use this. I've been doing 15 cards for a friend and each one has quite a large Christmas tree on. Um, <laughs> so I'm slightly worried that I'm going to run out of Alpine Green at some point, just with the sheer amount of that I'm using it. Um, I may actually invest in a spare Alpine Green just to be on the safe side. Um... Also, you'll have probably noticed at the beginning of the video, um, the lighting was slightly different. Believe it or not, I actually filmed that after I'd filmed the video because the original beginning I'd filmed to the video went really, really weird. It was at like a quarter speed. And even when I sped it up, I just couldn't speed it to the right speed and it was annoying me too much. So I just decided to reshoot the opening for the video. Um, I'm just colouring in... As I say, I did decide quite a bit of the gold accents were going to come out on this. Um, in relation to the beginning of the video, I did originally show stamping the image, but obviously I lost that when I had to give up on it. Um, <laughs> I decided to use the blue shades to do some little jeans on the little boy. Um, so just putting the shade in down the sides of his legs and underneath where his jacket would be casting a shadow and um, for his shoes I decided it'd be quite nice if he had like little blue um tips and heels on them just because there is that detail there and then I was going to color the shoes in with the different shade of the grays that I used on hers um, the ice square blend rather than the ice square shades. However, I then remembered that when I was looking through my collection, I did find some blue greys. 
um, just in my standard Spectrum Noir pens, which are these two, the BGR1 and BGR3. So I decided, since I'd found them, that they would probably actually be quite nice, obviously with having the blue bits to his shoes as well, to just take in that little bit of extra blueiness to the grey. Is that a real phrase? <laughs> I've said it now. Um, so that was my plan on that. I mean, I did quite like the way they turned out. I decided to do his coat in the yellow, gold, gold yellow even blend, um, to be kind of like a mustardy colour, because I always think that looks quite nice with blues and greens. And then remembered as I was colouring that that was also the colour I'd done his little stripes on his um, scarf in. But by this point, I'd already started it. And I actually do really like the way that the colours turn out and look. Um, so it didn't end up being as much of a disaster as I did panic that it would. It took me a while to decide what colour to do his hat as well. But then I decided to go and let him have a matching set. Um, so it's the Alpine Greens again. As I say, this is the brush version of the marker um, because I'm doing a larger area I'm just laying down the light with the brush marker you can cover a much larger space a lot faster with the brush ones and then I'm just adding in um, the darkness just along where the brim would have caught it and also where it goes around um, where it kind of doubles over at the top and I decided to just do the the squishy top bit of his hat first um, and then do the band around the side just to make sure I didn't let the inks settle too long because obviously it's best to work with them when they're still quite wet so they will blend as they go and I was really pleased with how they turned out if I'm honest um, so that was that blended in um, the present I decided um, that I wanted to do some reds on the ribbon just to bring in some more of the more traditional Christmas colours um, so just the darker shade on the undersides of the ribbon where it's folded over and just blended that out I do really like this red blend um, it's my go-to Christmas red if I'm honest um, it's been used a lot if anything's going to go after the alpine green it'll probably be this and then I also remember there was the little berries to do in the holly so I thought I'd colour those of them. Um, for the holly green I didn't want to use yet more of the alpine green. I did get it out I'm not gonna lie and then I suddenly thought no so I got the dull green out instead just for a difference. Um, when we get to the next section which is colouring in the rest of the wrapping paper on the present so the outside of it I did kind of like the idea of leaving it white, so it was just white paper that had the little berries on, but I thought I'd use an ice blue blend and my colourless marker, my colourless blender marker to just add a little bit of shading to it. Um, as soon as I put the blue on to the present, I had a little mini panic attack, um, but once I started blending it out, I was actually really pleased with how it turned out. To be perfectly honest, this Im image is probably one of the most images I've been most proud of recently um, so that's that done so I just trim that down and then I have a nice card blank down to four by five and three quarters so I'm just using some papers I've pulled from my Christmas my favorite things pads and um, but before I use those I'm going to take my misty to put my sentiment on the inside of my card and um, I'm determined to remember to put sentiments like on the inside of cards a bit more often I am really bad at remembering to do it I do tend to just write a lot of babble of my own in a card now but I really wanted to try and put something a little bit cuter in there so I decided to pop the little tree in the bottom and then I changed my mind on the sentiment about three times and then decided to go with we wish you a merry christmas and um, so I'm just using my my favorite things extreme black again just to stamp that in there um, and I really like the font on this, just the fact that it has the two different fonts to it, I think is quite cute. Um, so I'm just using my sleeve to try and get a bit of a better press down on there. And then I can pop that away. Um, I promise I did clean off my stamps and everything. Um, I just put them to the side while I finish the card. Um, so my plan is to have a strip of this down the centre. Um, and this is my new tape runner. Um, I was quite 
disappointed when I originally got it because, believe it or not, the tape is actually white rather than clear, which I thought it was. But then I also remembered that pretty much everything I stick is a white background, apart from at Halloween. And I do have some older tape runners that I can use for that. And I use a lot of liquid glue anyway, so overall, not a bad thing. And it's a nice runner. It runs well and it does the job, so I'm not going to overly stress about that. Um, so I'm just sticking that down the middle and that was me just rubbing it to make sure there was no glue sticking up the edge before I tried to cut it with my scissors. Um, and then I'm just going to take some of my huge roll of um, Scotch 3M double sided tape, which I just got off Amazon. Um, it was a huge roll and I needed some and I was like, oh, that's a great idea. I think a few people that I do actually follow on here also have that roll and it will be my new go-to because it's really good value so I'm wanting to stick that little banner piece um all I did for that by the way was just work out how far up I wanted and cut from the bottom corner into the middle with just um my craft knife and um, so I'm just pop using glue to stick the banner down and um, I think I'm finally starting to get through that tube of glue it's lasted me what feels like forever so I just keep bringing in my topper just to check exactly where my positioning is for the banner. And um, just to get that sat down. And then I just need to take the backing off these strips. And to be honest, I even find the backing comes off these easy. So I think that for me is a winner. Because if you've ever seen me trying to take the backing off foam strips, you know it is not a skill of mine. So that was an achievement and a half in itself. Um, but that is the card nearly done. I did bring out my Spectrum Noir um, sparkle pen just to go over the bow, just to pop a little bit of sparkle in, um, just because I thought that would be quite cute. Um, and it does catch the light, if I can shake it in the right way. Um, but that's the card. I hope you all enjoy it. I'll just show you the inside again. If you've enjoyed my video, please do hit the like button. And also, if you would like to see more content, hit subscribe. Thanks so much for spending the time with me this afternoon or this morning whenever you're watching. And I will speak to you soon. Bye.